It's actually not 7 to the 1 fifth. If I wanted to show 7 to the 1 fifth, 7 and x to the 1 fifth, here's how I do it. I want you to see the difference here. If I want to show both of them, what would I need to put? Very similar to this negative idea. Notice how if I want to include the negative, I've got to have in parentheses. If I don't want to include the negative, I don't have parentheses. If I want to include the number, I've got to have parentheses. If I don't, then I don't. So on this example, is the 7 going to be inside of our root or not? What do you think? No, no it's outside. It's outside, yeah. This, what this says right here is 7 times x to the 1 fifth. You with me? It's like the negative 1. 7 times x to the 1 fifth. Use your order, order of operations and think about this. This says I'm doing 7 times the fifth root of x. That's 7 times the fifth root of x. The 7 is not inside the radical because it's not in the parentheses. Folks, are you okay on that one? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Do you see the difference between this one and this one? Mm -hmm. This is still 7 times x, but all of that's to the 1 -fifth power. So this says, all right, I do have a fifth root, and everything in the parentheses is going to be my radicand, what's on the inside. So again, if it's in parentheses, yes, it goes on the inside of your, your radical. If it's not in parentheses, it doesn't. It doesn't. Raise your hand if you're all right with it so far. Good deal. Left side of the room, you guys okay with this? All right. Try a few on your own, okay? Let's see if you can manage these. So translating these things into radicals, and then we're trying to simplify them, if we can. Let's give these a try. So x to the 1 fourth, we need to notice what type of roots these are, then be able to write this appropriately as the type of radical that it is. So what type of root do we have if I have x to the 1 fourth? I know it is a root because I got a fraction. What type of root? Fourth root. Yeah, the denominator is going to tell you the type of root that we have. So here we have a fourth root for sure. You, you can't forget about that 4. That tells you the type of root, right? We don't want to write square roots all the time. They're not all square roots. What's, what is our radicand here? Thanks. X to the what power? First. First power, okay. Did you all get the fourth root of X? Uh -huh. Awesome. Next one, we got negative 9 to the 1 half. What type of root do we have? Square. So I'm just going to write the radical without any indices because it, that, it implies a square root. One question, is the negative going to go on the inside of our square root or the outside of our square root? Outside. Why outside? No. Okay, so this is very much like saying this is negative 1 times 9 to the 1 half. So in other words, it's negative square root of 9. That's something that we can do. We can do the negative square root of 9. How much is that? Negative 3. Okay, so simplify it if you can. You get negative 3. How many people are 2 for 2 so far? Good for you. That's fantastic. Okay, next up. We have 81x to the 8th all to the 1 4th power. What type of root do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? 
fourth root, okay, so I know that I'm writing at least a four for the radical. Now the 81, is the 81 going to be on the inside of our radical or the outside of our radical? Inside. Definitely, it's in the parentheses. So we got 81 x to the 8. We have a fourth root of 81 x to the 8. Let's try to simplify that. Can you think of the fourth root of 81? Something times itself four times, it gives you 81? Three. Yeah, you think of maybe the square root and then do it one more time. So the square root of 81 is 9. The fourth root, split those up, you get 3. I'll leave that for just a second. We'll do the fourth root of 81 times. And I'm going to write x to the eighth. You can choose to do this two ways. Either as something to the fourth power. That would be x squared to the fourth power and cross out those fourths. Or you write x to the fourth times x to the fourth. Either way you want to do that. As many x to the fourths as we can and still make up x to the eighth. So we have the fourth root of 81. Y'all told me that was 3. This gives you 1x. This gives you another x, so we have x squared. Did you get that one? Good, okay. Last one, we have 5y to the 1 one third. What type of root? Third root, okay, cool. So I know I'm going to be drawing a third root. On the inside of our cube root, what do we have? Well, what will happen to the 5? Okay, so we, we don't have the same situation here. Here the 81 was inside of our root because it was in the, the parentheses. If it's not, if it's not in that parentheses, this exponent is really only being applied towards this y. It's not actually going to the 5 as well. There's no distribution of exponents like that if there's no parentheses. Here we can because, well, it's, it's all to the 1 fourth power. Here there's none. So we have the 5 up front, the y as our radicand, and that's our answer. We can't do anything more than that. How many will feel pretty good about this so far? Good. Now, what would happen if on the inside of our radical, we didn't just have a power 1? I kind of previewed this a little while ago, but what if we had an nth root of a? This was exactly how we started our, our lesson today. But instead of just having a little 1 here, we had another power, like m. Let me draw that bigger so you can dream that a little bit better. An nth root of a to the m power now. Well, here's what we've learned so far. We know that whatever's on the inside of our radical is going to be our base. So we're still going to have an a. But before, when we had like x to the 1 fourth, the denominator told us the type of root that we have. So in our case, what's our denominator here? So we're still going to have something over n. The root is always your denominator. Root, 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 root. Every time that told us the root. That's how we found it. Only this time, instead of having a numerator of 1, what do you think we're going to have? M. Yeah, just m. Whatever the, the power is. Here, in every case, our, our power was 1. That's why we just wrote x to the first, 9 to the first. Uh, this was all to the first. Everything was to the first power. This was y to the first power. If I have another number besides a 1 up there, like an m, we just write a to the m over n. So it's power over root. You guys got to get that in your head. How we write radicals is power over root. Power over root. Wherever the power is, over whatever the root is. None of you are still okay with this. All right, good. You want to see why? <laughs> of course you do. Answer's always yes for that one. Do you want to see why? Yes. And we're so excited at 725 in the morning to learn about why this is the way it is. Well, I can show you. You just have to trust me on one little piece of information. Um, if, we, if we talk about this uh, nth root of a to the m, you're going to have to believe me that it doesn't matter when I take this to the power. I can take it to the power and then find the root, or take the root and then find the power. So you're going to have to trust me on this one little step, but then everything else falls into place. You need to trust me that this is the same thing as this. Do you trust me? Well, it is. <laughs> Well, it is. And the reason why that is the way it is, is because x, uh, multiplication of exponents. Uh, when you take a power to a power, you can do that. Well, here's the deal. We already knew how to deal with this, the nth root of a. This inside part was a to the 1 over n, right? This is this. Do you guys see it? And then to the nth power. Now, we kind of talked about this very briefly, but what happens when you have an exponent 
raised to an exponent. Do you add, subtract, multiply, divide? What do you do? Yeah, we should know those exponent rules, right? When you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply them. And so here, we go, oh, okay. Well, this is a to the 1 over n times m. Or in other words, m over 1. We can change m to m over 1. And those are fractions. If you have 1 over n times m over 1, we know how to multiply fractions. We go straight across. 1 times m is m. n times 1 is n. And that proves that this equals that. Can you follow it? Okay, so that's just a little proof. The only thing you have to believe is that step right there. Everything else kind of falls into place. Now let's see if we can do some examples. It's going to be very, very similar to what we just did over here, okay? Very similar. So let's do the... <coughs> cube root of 2 to the 5th... Can you write that as a fractional exponent? Can you write that as a, I'm sorry, can you, yeah, as a fractional exponent? Yeah. What is our numerator, our numerator going to be in this case? Good. It's going to be the powers or numerator. What's the type of uh, root that we have? So what's our denominator? Q. So this is going to be 2 to what power? Two to the five. You ever think you'd, you'd see something like that? Two to the five thirds. What the heck? What does that mean? Two to the five thirds. It means take a cube root after you take two to the fifth power. That's what that means. Can you go the other way? Can we do nine to the three halves? We do 9 to the 3 halves. Ladies and gentlemen, what type of root, what type of root do I have here? A square root. Why a square root? Okay, so this, the denominator, this bottom number, that denominator is going to tell you what type of root you have every single time. So in our case, we are going to have a 9, but that's going to be a square root. Now, do we leave 9 to the first power like I have it right here? No. What power is it going to be? Okay. Can you simplify that? What this says is take 9 to the third power. How much is 9 to the third power? 9 times 9 times 9, right? More, way more than 200. It's going to be 81 times 9. So should end in 9. Yeah, 729. Okay, 729. You got it? Mm -hmm. Easy. <laughs> Double check that math, by the way. Is that right? <laughs> okay, and you all know the square root of 729, don't you? Of course you do. Come on. You don't know the square root of 729? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's 27. <laughs> How do you not know that off the top of your head? Would you like an easier way to do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you believe me on this step? Yeah. I want to show you something. Right here we did this the hard way. The hard way was make a really big number first and then try to find the square root of it. You with me? That's the hard way. Here's an easier way. If you trusted me on, on this step, watch what you could do. Instead of having the square root of 9 cubed, I told you that this is the same thing as the square root of 9 